ways to the top so you still get an abrupt push from the log into your front tire to get you up when your front tire hits it compresses the entire bike when it's unloading you also jump with the bike the momentum that you gain before the log is the momentum that cover uh, carries you up on top of it So at this point, I wanted so desperately to get this zap that I failed to record any of us amateurs going over this log, and I'm sorry about that. I do have some log footage that I'll show you at the end, but he did emphasize heavily front wheel impacting the face and then jumping. Didn't really talk as so much about building RPM before we moved on to this rock face. You don't get your rear to the top, it'll slide off, but we'll be standing up here to catch you guys. So the reason this one's perfect is because there's no cheating. <laughs> you cannot ride into it and make it up. It just won't because the hole at the bottom is too big. So this forces you to hit the front and lift the rear. Second and gear? First, everything first. 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 Um, all of this movement is identical to the movement on the log. So wheelie, hit, compress, jump. The momentum will take you forward, and the harder you jump, the higher you'll get. All the way up. Yeah, he knows where his front wheel hit and yeah. preloaded the suspension a bunch. A bunch. He had a big clutch pop. Wheel popping right to the top. So this is where the jump really comes into play here because you're unweighting that bike. So for your own benefit, I'm going to include many of my failed attempts at zapping here. Just not getting the front wheel low enough, then not committing with enough RPM, enough jump, getting the timing wrong, you name it. I screwed it up. But I think this helps sometimes when you see someone else do it wrong. So this was the end of class, but it certainly wasn't the end of my practicing on zaps for the weekend. I just wasn't satisfied. I mean, gosh, I felt like I regressed in some manner of speaking. So I went back to the playground and worked on the type of zaps that I knew how to do, which is where you're lifting the front wheel higher and then bringing it down into the obstacle. And this is definitely different. It's a different technique. And so we're going to talk about it here for just a moment. I would say that honestly, the clutch is kind of divided almost into three parts. And these guys weren't really talking about pulling the clutch and building RPMs. They were talking mostly about body and jumping, which is all true. It's all a part of it. But I think sometimes pros take for granted the things that they're doing with their fingers and the building the RPMs. And the mortals are like, wait, how did you just get all that lift? So we're going to talk about this for a second. And I'm going to use this little diagram and chart. As you know, I like to make these drawings. So here we go. So I would say the type of zap you just saw me doing almost has two wheelies, two separate RPMs and clutch engagement points. So you could say this blue line is like the clutch. I'm in fully engaging it at that first wheelie in order to get the wheel up nice and high and then bring the front wheel back down, build up the RPM before popping it. So if the RPM is like this red line here, then you're going to see a distinct rise in RPM on the first wheelie and that yellow line down there is like the wheelie and then another building of RPM p.m. on the second wheelie and this one's actually a lot higher than what i drew but that's where you're getting the clutch pop right there boom drive it up onto the obstacle and this is like the mcdonald's arch so you can see in slow motion lifting this front wheel and i'm actually applying just a touch of front brake which is another complexity that i'm not going to go into but the concept being two distinct wheelies 
Now let your ears make the distinction in RPM between what I'm doing and what the next couple sound like. So I just couldn't get it out of my head. There was something different that these kids were doing. The RPM sounded different. The clutch engagement I knew was different. So I'm going to say the clutch was maybe a third engage before dipping back down, but it was the RPM that just continually rose up. It was a much faster zap for sure. There wasn't that big first wheelie. They just kind of slowly brought it up and then drove into the obstacle. And that's the same thing that Alex was doing there. It wasn't big McDonald's front wheel. It was drive the front wheel in and then pop it up above. In addition to that, they were also using a lot more RPM, more engine, which I'll admit I've got some RPM anxiety, but I knew I wanted to get busy working on this right away. So back at the playground, young Ryan Lance, 12 year old, I said, man, coach me, show me how you're doing that. And he was happy to. The first thing he said, you gotta hit the front wheel lower. So here you can see him doing it and holding pressure really nice. Man, this kid is a great rider. And it took a while. I had to get the timing sorted out. I kept watching him, listening to him, trying to shorten up that first wheelie and drive it in, but my front wheel just kept hitting too high. So with a bunch more practice, I did make progress and it started to look a little more like this. Now I know I still got a long way to go, but the idea of a shorter first wheelie and continuing to build that RPM was just different. And I wanted to draw the distinction here for you guys because it was something that I learned that weekend. And that's what I'm trying to do with this channel. Just share the things that I'm learning. I haven't mastered these things. This is just my journey along the way. This is second year moto trials. Appreciate you guys coming to check out the channel. Hopefully you've learned something about zaps from Alex and the rest of the gang at TTC. I've got more videos of the things that I learned that weekend coming at you so make sure to hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next one